Hey guys, welcome back to the Best Practices Show podcast. You know the jam around here. I get to meet some really cool people in dentistry and I bring them on the show to share their thoughts and insights to help you create a better practice and a better life. And today I've got a great one, Dr. Tiffany Lamberton. And we're going to be talking about how you can break down the barriers in dentistry and medicine and what that really means. Tiffany, thanks for being back. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me back on the podcast, Kurt. It's an honor to be here. Oh my gosh. It's the pleasure's all mine. So you and I had a chance to meet uh, a little while back and you've been on the podcast previously, but it's not a surprise that you're a rock star. You're hanging around the right people in dentistry. And so um, for those of you that don't know who you are, I'd love for you just to give a little bit of bio. Tell, tell us a little bit of your background. Sure. Well, I'm Dr. Tiffany Lamberton of TMD Collective, and my background is a little bit unique in that I have dual degrees in physical therapy and dentistry. So I've tried to kind of combine both of those degrees and those skill sets um, to really limit my practice as a general dentist to looking at temporomandibular joint disorders, TMD, airway issues. And, you know, I have to give a shout out to my colleagues uh, and mentors, Dr. Jim McKee, Dr. Drew McDonald. Those are just truly great practitioners that have influenced me and helped me get to where I'm at. Um, But what I've sort of carved out here is uh, not just a, a TMD practice, but also an educational platform. Because I think when general dentists kind of hear TMD, they just want to go, you know, like, I, I don't want to treat joint patients, that seems complicated. Um, but what we do, what we forget is that everyone has jaw joints, everyone needs to move their jaw joints to open their mouth to get fillings to chew to eat to function. And so my goal has been to really educate other dentists about, you know, kind of the pathway that I've learned about it. Um, and just really you know, combining both, uh, you know, a comprehensive diagnosis for our patients with modern imaging. So we have a lot of tools here at our disposal now um, in 2024 that really change the way that we practice as dentists. And it's really opened our eyes to, um, you know, a lot of things in anatomy that, you know, we're not just looking at teeth. Now we're looking at a, a bigger lens, a bigger picture of things. Yeah, it's so cool. I want to go back to the title that you suggested that I love, Breaking Down the Barriers in Dentistry and Medicine. Tell us what that really means to you and why that's so important. Yeah, so I am very passionate about interdisciplinary care. I think that when we have complex problems, we forget how to communicate and and collaborate with our friends on the the medical side. So kind of going back to my background as a physical therapist, you know, as a PT, you deal with injuries to the neck and spine, the cervical spine all the time. You know, people get in car accidents or they get whiplash or um, and you know, we forget that with the jaw joints, a lot of times the jaw joints are injured at the same time that the cervical spine is injured. And those injuries can go really hand in hand. And so I think a lot of dentists, you know, kind of forget a little bit of like, oh, well, let's send that to the PT because I don't know what to do. And so what I want to empower general dentists is really learning to work together as an interdisciplinary team with our colleagues on the medical side. So whether you're doing airway dentistry and you're talking with an ENT or a sleep physician, a PT, maybe a chiropractor, um, maybe a myofunctional therapist, each person on that team has a unique perspective and a way of looking at things and they can really like add to our practice and to our patients. And so the goal is really in order to kind of solve complex problems, we need to be able to gather together as a collective and really bring each other up and and help each other. So that's where, you know, TMD Collective kind of got started because, 
you know, most TMD patients tend to be more female and, you know, we tend to get it, you know, maybe more than males. And it tends to be kind of this frustrating problem to a lot of patients where they feel like they've been to a lot of different practitioners. Everybody's saying about the same thing, but they're not getting that clear diagnosis. So I want our general dentist to kind of feel like they're that air traffic controller when it comes especially to our young patients in terms of craniofacial growth and development. And I know you've had Becca Bacow on the show. I've had her on my Jaw Talk podcast. She's amazing. Um, you know, what we're realizing and, and Dr. Drew McDonald, you know, he's doing a lot of imaging with his young, you know, pre-orthodontic patients. And what we're realizing, Kirk, is that even in these young patients, not everybody has healthy joints and not everyone has an ideal airway space. And so rather than kind of waiting until it's a full problem as an adult, we have this sort of opportunity to intervene in some of these young kiddos lives um, and be able to kind of guide growth, um, but have that guidance be dictated by modern imaging. So you and I are big believers in digital dentistry, you know, intraoral scanning, cone beam CT, MRI of the TM joints, MRI sometimes of the cervical spine, and really like learning how to put that all together and then use technology to, you know, just rapidly transform our practice. So I, I think we're in exciting times. You know, I, I see what some of these companies are doing, you know, Drew McDonald works with um, Immersive Touch, which is an incredible company that is taking uh, virtual reality and taking segmented anatomy and putting it all together so you can put those goggles on and just exactly see, you know, not just the teeth, but the TM joints, the cervical spine, the airway space. And then that allows us to really communicate and collaborate with our interdisciplinary team. So we're living in an exciting, really cool time. Yeah. And that excitement really comes across with you. I mean, you're obviously very passionate about this. It's such a cool, <laughs> it's such a cool part of dentistry and you are really working hard to change the narrative around TMD. What's, I guess one of my questions is what do most people get wrong about TMD? You know, because number one, I believe it's an incredible opportunity in dentistry, but you shouldn't do it just for the opportunity. You should do it because you're passionate around it. Um, it also allows you to really differentiate yourself, don't you think, in the marketplace? Um, right. As you talk to younger dentists, just what are, what are some of the things that people get wrong about this area of dentistry? Well, I think, and you know, we, you mentioned, you know, before we started recording is that there tends to be a lot of different camps when you talk about TMD, there could be, you know, maybe the neuromuscular camp, there could be, you know, a, more of an oral medicine camp, um, you know, there could be, um, you know, more of an imaging camp. And so, you know, I, I don't know that like I think in the past, there's been a lot of animosity towards like, oh, this algorithm is the right way to treat the patient, or it's just about the muscle, or you just need to do it this way. Um, but what I think, you know, how we can kind of wrap our arms around the problem is by utilizing, like I said, both kind of that comprehensive diagnosis of just, you know, as dentists, we look at how the teeth fit together, the bite, the occlusion, um, you know, what the patient looks like, what do you see with the skeleton and, um, you know, the underlying, you know, framework of where the muscles need to be and be functioning. And, you know, combining that then with you know, modern imaging. So like I mentioned, cone beam CT can give us a lot of information about the skeleton and the heart tissue. Um, and then MRI of the TM joints, which I've been, you know, so privileged to be able to learn so much from Dr. Jim McKee about how to do it, how to communicate with an imaging center to get the right imaging that we need. Um, and so a lot of dentists, I think, just, you know, that's a barrier for them to have MRI of the all of their patients, you know, and they kind of get stuck in that pathway. Um, but, 
you know, when we have the skills and the tools to be able to read imaging and interpret that for our patients, and whether that's us as general dentists, or also looping in maybe an oral maxillofacial radiologist on our team um, to help us with our, our anatomy and help us with our read, um, all of those things are going to give our patients that higher quality of care. Um, so no matter what the treatment is that we're proposing, if you're starting to see some high risk things as a dentist that, you know, maybe some red flags, um, you know, maybe the patient um, has some already limited range of motion with how they're opening, or maybe you see some deviation as, as they're chewing. Um, maybe you have heard from their clinical history, some things that you want to dive into a little bit more like, hey, you know, tell me about that car accident you said you were in, you know, six months ago, like what happened? Um, you know, so kind of bringing all those skills together as a general dentist so that we're, we're very comprehensive in how we assess our patients. I think that, um, you know, getting the, the answer first before we jump into a treatment is so key. And I, I think it's hard because, right, we want to just jump into clear retainers or we want to jump into full mouth rehab or we want to jump into veneers and smile design, you know, and all those things are fun and exciting and, and clinical topics that we've been well trained at. But if you're missing some of those key, um, you know, overall big picture items, um, you know, you you could maybe get yourself into trouble later on down the road where maybe you have this beautiful veneer case that you've done, but then six months later, the patient starts breaking, breaking their restorations, and then you're tearing your hair out. So I think, you know, kind of stopping, you know, kind of like pumping the brakes in the beginning, saying like, okay, I'm going to get the big picture first before I jump into treatment. I, I think to me that eliminates a lot of frustration with patients um, and a lot of frustration to the dentist when you have outcomes that maybe um, were not as optimal as you wanted them to be. Yeah, this is awesome. Now go back to the imaging thing because speak to the importance of imaging. So this is kind of a multi-part question. How has imaging changed since you've been in practice, how important is imaging? That's number two. And number three, dispel the rumor that you got to buy every piece of equipment to get started <laughs> in this. Can you speak to all three of those? I want everything. <laughs> I know. Well, that's okay. It's okay to want it, but you don't need, you don't have to have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I compare, you know, what we've seen with CBCT from, let's say, an endodontist perspective, right? So I say to my endodontist, you know, could you ever go back to practicing in the TD, you know, 2D world where now you have cone beam CT with a limited field of view? You can see every single canal. You can see every little bit of anatomy. And now you have magnification. You have a microscope. You know, could you ever go back and practice the way that you did, you know, 10, 15 years ago? And most of them are like, no. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, well, let's apply that to the macro scale now. You know, now that we have a bigger field of view with the cone beam CT, we can get the joints in the picture. We can look at, you know, the bone quality around the teeth, you know, uh, to borrow what Dr. Jim McKee says, you know, the teeth are just extensions of the skeleton of, of the maxilla and the mandible. And so if we can see that, that framework first and know that our treatment that we're proposing, like I said, whether it's appliance therapy, whether it's clear retainers and orthodontics, maybe moving the teeth or it's restorative treatment. If we have that picture, all of a sudden it's like a crystal ball. We can see, can, can the skeleton support this picture? And so, you know, I, I think a lot of dentists are really getting on board with cone beam CT. I think like I mentioned earlier, that MRI, uh, particularly of, of the TM joints, has been slower to catch on um, because, you know, there's lots of excuses people throw at, you know, well, it's expensive. Well, does medical, you know, does medical insurance cover it? How do I communicate with the radiologist? How do I get the imaging center to image the patient that I, the way that I want to? And then now I have these images. Now what, you know, how do I read and interpret them? So it, it, 
I would say that the MRI piece of it um, has been slower to be accepted, I think, on a, a gross scale of dentistry. But, you know, like I said, people like Dr. Jim McKee, Dr. Drew McDonald are really um, forging a way forward by really starting to image not just the adult patients, but those, like I mentioned, those young pre-orthodontic patients. And, you know, if we're finding out in that young pre-orthodontic patient that the joints are not healthy, then I think it changes the discussion of how, of the, the prognosis that we're having with both the parent and, and the patient. Yes, we can fix your spot, smile, but we have these limitations or, you know, we may need to do, you know, another step in the process or you may need to have another type of consultation as part of our, our comprehensive picture. So I think airway, you know, has become a, a really big hot topic in dentistry and, and a lot of people are, are utilizing sleep screening and, and understanding the the importance of including that in your medical model. Um, but I, I, I really do think we can't leave the TM joints out of the picture. They're, they're the neglected ones. <laughs> yeah. And it's so cool that you fight for this cause. Um, I want you to talk about study clubs because you're passionate about education. Your definition yeah. and vision of study club is a little bit different than just the GP you know, um, because of your passion in this, how, how's, how's your vision for study clubs just changed the way you practice and the way you educate around this topic? Yeah. Well, like I said, I've just been lucky to be in so many um, great groups. Um, you know, I live in the greater Seattle area. So, you know, we have amazing dental educators, you know, John Coys, Frank Spear. Um, you know, I, I love Jim McKee. I've been kind of following him around since 2012. And so when he started his uh, Chicago study club with um, Kurt Ringhofer, Dr. Seth Atkins, and Dr. Drew McDonald, um, you know, I was like, sign me up. Um, it's a great, great group of dentists. I think there's about 40 to 50 of us. We meet twice a year in Chicago, um, once in the spring and once in the fall. And it's just such an incredible opportunity to talk about cases, um, to talk about communication skills. Um, you know, we kind of go all over the place and the study club kind of drives, you know, what, you know, like, Jim will say like, what do you guys wanna talk about next? Or like, what's top of mind? And so I love that it's kind of this sort of fluid model um, because with dentistry, you know, like we talked about, you know, we, we tend to be a little isolated, I think sometimes in our practice and we forget how great it was in dental school when you could just walk across the clinic floor and talk to your periodontist or you could talk to oral surgery or, um, you know, you always had resources and help if you got stuck in a clinical situation. And so I think as the, as the young dentist is coming out of school and, um, you know, starting to practice, you know, I think sometimes you can get a little bit lost in some of these big meetings where, you know, you're kind of wandering around in the exhibit hall and, you know, should I buy this or should I buy that? And, um, you know, with our study club, everyone is just so incredibly generous with their knowledge and you know, you know, some people may have Maja or some people may have, you know, some new software or, you know, some new thing. And, and not everyone is going to have that. But um, I think it's a, a great, you know, sort of way to connect with other dentists and get your questions answered. Um, so I love my Chicago Study Club. It's bougie. It's fun. Um, I learned so much every time we meet, it, it's incredible. So um, I, I think that style of learning is appealing more to, um, you know, maybe the younger dentist that's, you know, maybe five to 10 years uh, out in practice. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think, it, you know, there's really a market for more of like a niche, you know, continuing education, like what you guys put on, you know, you get all kinds of questions, like what kind of practice management software should I buy? Should I, you know, invest in this? Should I do that? Or like, how do I, you know, handle all these questions about team members or, you know, I mean, there's so many aspects of being a dentist and juggling, you know, kind of a professional career as, as well as uh, being a leader in your practice. And so kind of finding your collective and your community to get your questions answered. 
Yeah, I love the word collective too. So we could we could incorporate that in just about it. It's that's a great brand. Um, and Jib's been on here many times and said uh, in different ways, study club learning is the most effective mm-hmm. and efficient and lifelong. Uh, and I would agree. I mean, there's so many things. Even Jim was here a couple of weeks ago. We were throwing tough questions at him. Okay, let's just go. What do you even charge for that? And he's like, I'll just tell you what I charge for, how I do it. It's brilliant because, and the other thing that happens in this kind of learning, don't you agree, Tiffany, is like, you're asking these questions to somebody who's been there before, who's been through, who's navigated through these channels in a difficult, in difficult, or, and they've learned from other people. So, the learning is so multidimensional and meaningful yeah. in this respect, don't you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. And like I said, all of those leaders have just been such an inspiration to me because they're so incredibly generous with their with their expertise, their time. You know, you could I could text Seth a question and he would just like he'd send me an answer. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'd be like, what about this? How do I do that? You know, whereas like you know, sometimes I think when you purchase like a big piece of equipment, you you know, you get the sales rep, you do the training, and then it's like, now what? You know, and you don't want to have an investment, you know, piece of technology in your practice that you're not utilizing it or that your team's not utilizing. And so I think having those resources too, I mean, because we do have a lot of educational and, and materials that um, are available to us, but I mean, um, you can kind of start drowning in, you know, YouTube or podcasts or, you know, there's so many ways to get information. And so I think when you have a like-minded um, group of practitioners that are um, connected and networking together, it can be really powerful. Yeah, absolutely. It also, it doesn't fix the loneliness, but it helps with the loneliness, you know, sometimes being an entrepreneur. So you're like, these people get me. These are my people. Everybody's got to find their people, you know? Um, so I do want to ask you just one, you know, just because you're in the know for so many of these conversations around TMD and then breaking down the barrier between dentistry and medicine, I think we've come a long way, but what, what do you foresee in the future about a bigger barrier? Are, when you open up the conversation to medicine, are they more receptive? Does the barrier seem to get bigger? It's anyone's guess, but I always like to have our guests predict the future. What do you see here in the future? (laughs) Well, I mean, I think there's a lot of excitement right now on AI generated, you know, treatment planning, learning, um, you know, interpretation, you know, already there's, you know, AI studies looking at, uh, you know, let's say one topic would be articular disc displacement of the TM joints. Um, You know, what does that look like if an AI is is reading your x-rays versus a radiologist? Like, is there accuracy? Is, Is there predictability? And You know, I I think you've seen with, you know, some of these great dentists that are really promoting digital dentistry and digital workflow and AI generated things. It's incredible how fast it's changing. And so um, I do see these communication systems being better of how we we talk back and forth and share images with our colleagues on the medical side. Um, I, I think the quicker we can use those digital platforms to, you know, collaborate and share and, um, like I said, kind of lend our perspective to the interdisciplinary team, then it's going to all be for the benefit of the patient. Um, so, you know, right now, I think there's there's some barriers with cost um, and, you know, kind of different systems, you know, obviously maybe more of like an academic or a hospital-based system may, um, you know, have better access or better funding to some of these things. But I feel hopeful that as technology is, is quickly and rapidly progressing, you know, some of these questions will be answered um, and, and be more a, a more efficient system for our patients. Because, you know, even MRI right now is, is, is the, the cost can be prohibitive to pa- patients. But I mean, you think about it, any other part of the body, if you had a rotator cuff tear, or you had, uh, you know, an ACL tear in your knee, you were, you know, medicine is already using MRI as part of their diagnostic process. And so I would love to see dentistry, um, you know, jump into that with, with, you know, two feet and, and, you know, progress faster as well. Yeah, so good. Um, I want you to talk about, you've got a very unique opportunity. It's a retreat. But before we do, I want you to talk, I want you to give us some final thoughts 
on this, breaking down the barriers in dentistry and medicine? What would you say? Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, like I said, connecting with like, like-minded like practitioners, you know, social media, uh, thing, you know, different platforms like LinkedIn or Instagram can be really great ways to connect with other dentists um, quickly. And, you know, it's not just seeing uh, each other's, you know, beautiful restorative work. It's also, you know, how are you treating this type of patient? If you're seeing this type of, um, you know, high-risk TMD patient in, in a very young patient, what's next you know so i think connecting with other like-minded practitioners is so important to um, elevating our our patient care um, you know everyone's going to be at a different level i think starting out with but as we are pulling in more and more digital dentistry and and scanning we're pulling in cbct pulling in imaging once you see that data and that imaging and and your eyes have been opened i think all of a sudden you start treating your patients in a different way. Um, so, you know, really starting with that comprehensive diagnosis from the get-go and then deciding, you know, what type of modern imaging do I need and who do I need to collaborate with to get to where I, I, I want to have this final end product of, you know, kind of that optimal outcome. So, you know, utilizing uh, our, our technology and our, and our digital dentistry to accomplish those things, I think it's going, going to be huge. Um, so yeah, going to the future, I'm really excited. I'm holding a women in dentistry symposium, um, September six and seven right here in Tacoma, Washington, which is where I live. So Kirk, you've been to Seattle, you came and spoke at the PNDC. So Seattle's a, a, a quick flight. Um, Tacoma's just a, you know, 20 minute ride south of uh, SeaTac Airport. Um, so we've got a, a fantastic venue here. Um, it's really going to be a, a niche experience. We're going to have two members of the Chicago Study Club, Dr. Lynn Thomas and Dr. Courtney Donko are both going to be speakers. We also have Dr. Satara Lavasani, who's an oral maxillofacial radiologist. Um, we have Dr. Priya Mistry, who's the TMJ doc. She's very active on social media. She's going to kind of bring a little bit of the neuromuscular um, perspective. Um, and then you know, we we want all of the general dentists that are in, um, you know, general practice, maybe pediatric dentists, we want the specialists, we want the female orthodontists, the female oral surgeons, we want you all to come in, um, because it's not just going to be clinical topics, it's also going to be about leadership and women empowerment and pitch negotiation. How do you balance, you know, maybe, you know, I've got kiddos in my life, not everybody does, but sometimes balancing that professional life with um, your, you know, your family and, and how do you carve out time for, you know, self-care and, you know, just taking care of your body too. So we're also going to have some fun activities like Pilates, which I'm a huge uh, proponent of for staying active and flexible. Um, we're going to have wine tasting. We're going to have a private shopping event. So <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> so all you women in dentistry, sign up. We're going to include the links here in the show notes. And uh, like I said, we um, are, are just wanting to really welcome you to this really niche education experience. And really, it's almost like building a brand new study club. We're building a brand new collective. So this is my first event, um, learning lots of things along the way as we go. But we hope to have this be like a really cool um, you know, yearly event where people are coming from all over to experience um, the Pacific Northwest because you know we've got we, we've got beautiful mountains, water. Um, it, this is an incredible time of year to visit uh, Seattle, Washington. So come on and join us here in Tacoma in September. Yeah. So if you're listening to the podcast, just flip up to the show notes, just like Tiffany said. There'll be a link that'll take you right there, and I'm going to highly encourage you to check it out. Now, that's not all that you do, the retreat. Talk a little bit more. There's other things that you do. If somebody's listening to this and they want to find out more about what you're doing and what you're up to, where can they go? Sure. So tmdcollective.com is my main website um, for, you know, just like booking an appointment for my niche practice. Um, I also have a podcast that's called Jaw Talk. So if you just Google Jaw Talk podcast, 
Um, I've had the pleasure of some incredible guests uh, on my podcast, Dr. Drew McDonald, of course, Dr. Jim McKee came. Um, you know, I just twist everybody's arm and, and force them to come talk to me. Because <laughs> like you said, Kurt, you just have the, the best and the brightest minds. And um, so Jaw Talk is all about TMD, airway. Um, we talk about myofunctional therapy. So, um, you know, if you have a myofunctional therapist that you work with, um, we've had some great podcasts with um, some speech language pathologists, PTs. Um, so we're just uh, putting our arms around this really complex problem and learning how we can work together as an interdisciplinary team. So yeah, my Jaw Talk podcast, love to have you look at that. Um, we're on all major podcast platforms. And um, then, like I said, you know, Please, if you're a woman in dentistry and you're interested in our uh, event, you can either send me a message on Instagram or LinkedIn, um, or you can visit the, the link in the show notes. That's awesome. Tiffany, thank you so much for being on. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. It's really an honor to be on your podcast again. Oh my I gosh. We're going to have you back again and again and again, just to cover some great topics. You're up to some great things. Keep doing what you do. Okay. So thank you. Yeah. I'll stick around when we say goodbye to everybody else, but thank you guys for listening to the best practices show podcast. Hey, if you enjoyed today, do us a favor, hit the share button, share this with your friends, keep sending us suggestions for things that you guys want to see. Make sure you check out what Tiffany's up to. I'm telling you, you're going to enjoy it. So again, there'll be show, uh, links in the show notes. You can just go right down there and check it out. Um, and until we see you guys next time, or you hear from us next time, keep watching or keep listening to the best practices show. You guys enjoy your day. Oh,